Welcome, Midnight listeners. Tonight, we unravel the sinister story of the Candyman's Halloween stand, a tale that will make you think twice before reaching for that sweet treat. So turn off the lights, sit back, and prepare for a ride into the unknown. But beware, the Candyman may be watching, waiting for you to make your choice. And remember, if you enjoy the eerie, subscribe, like, and comment below. Have you ever heard of the Candyman? Maybe he's left you a little treat, too. I was ten years old the first time I heard about him. Kids whispered his name on the playground like he was an urban legend. The Candyman. Every Halloween, they'd say, he sets up a candy stand in the shadows, hidden from the view of parents and adults. His candy was the kind that made your mouth water. Full-size chocolate bars, rainbow-colored jawbreakers, licorice ropes as long as your arm. The kind of candy you only dreamed about when your pillowcase felt a little too light after a night of trick-or-treating. But there was a rule. Never go to the candy man stand alone. My best friend Jake and I always walked home together. That year, Halloween fell on a Saturday, so we were out later than usual. Most houses had their lights off by now, porch decorations dark and deflated. But we weren't ready to call it a night. Our bags were heavy, but something felt missing like we hadn't found that perfect score yet. The last house on our street was always empty, some kind of construction site. But tonight, there was something new. Under the glow of the orange streetlight, just out of reach of the shadows, stood a little candy stand. I stopped walking. Dude, do you see that? I asked Jake, pointing. He squinted. That wasn't there before, right? The stand was simple, wooden, like a lemonade stand. But instead of pitchers, it was stacked high with the most incredible assortment of candy I'd ever seen. Full-size bars, packs of gum, sour gummies, candy corn, and lollipops bigger than my fist. And behind the stand was a man, tall and thin, his face hidden beneath an old-fashioned top hat. His eyes glittered in the low light, watching us as we stared back, frozen. Is that him? Jake whispered. We both knew the stories, but no one we knew had ever actually seen the Candyman. It was always a friend of a friend kind of tale, but here he was. He beckoned us closer, his long fingers gesturing toward the candy. You boys look like you've had a long night, he said, his voice smooth as syrup. How about a little reward for your hard work? Jake nudged me, eyes wide. This is crazy, he muttered, but I was already walking toward the stand, my feet moving without my brain's permission. The air around the stand was thick with the smell of sweet, sticky sugar. I couldn't resist. The candy man leaned forward, his face half in shadow. He smiled, but his teeth. Something about them seemed off. Too white, too sharp. Take what you like, he whispered, his eyes darting to Jake, who hadn't moved. Plenty for both of you. I reached out, my hand hovering over a king-size Snickers bar. But just as my fingers brushed the wrapper, the candy man's hand shot out and grabbed my wrist. His grip was ice cold and his smile widened. One thing first, he said, his voice low. You have to play a game. I tried to pull my hand back, but his grip tightened. A game, I echoed, my voice shaking. Jake took a step back, but I was locked in place. The candy man's eyes sparkled and he released my wrist, straightening up. He moved from behind the stand with a slow, deliberate grace, like a spider crawling out of its web. He reached into his pocket and pulled out two small pieces of candy, each wrapped in shiny foil. One was red, the other green. You pick one, he said, holding them out. But choose carefully. One will bring you luck. The other, well, let's just say the night might not end as sweetly. Jake was pale now, his voice barely a whisper. Let's just go, man. This is too weird. But I couldn't leave. Something about the candy man had me rooted to the spot. The smell of the candy, the glittering wrappers, it was like they were calling to me. I had to know what would happen if I picked one. Maybe it was stupid curiosity, or maybe I didn't want to look scared in front of Jake, but I reached out and grabbed the red one. The candy man smiled wider. Good choice, he said, his voice a soft hiss. Now let's see what happens. I unwrapped the candy slowly, my heart pounding. Inside was a small, bright red gumdrop. It looked innocent enough, but the way the candy man was watching me made my stomach twist. I popped it into my mouth. The sweetness hit immediately, flooding my taste buds with a rush of sugar. But then, something changed. 
The taste grew sour, then bitter, and my mouth went dry. My head started to spin, the street lights blurring in my vision. I tried to swallow, but my throat felt like it was closing up. Jake grabbed my arm. Dude, are you okay? I wanted to answer, but I couldn't. My tongue felt swollen, my skin prickling like needles were crawling beneath it. The candy man was watching, his eyes glowing brighter in the shadows. You should have listened to your friend, he said softly, his voice echoing in my ears. I did warn you. Suddenly the world around me twisted, the houses and streetlights warping and stretching like I was inside some sort of funhouse mirror. Jake was shouting something, but his voice sounded distant, muffled. I tried to move, but my legs were locked in place. The candy man stepped closer, his face inches from mine now. His breath smelled sickly sweet, like rotting fruit. You chose wrong, he whispered. Now you're mine. I wanted to scream, but no sound came out. My body felt like it was being pulled, stretched in every direction, like taffy in a candy machine. The ground beneath me started to give way, turning soft and sticky. I looked down and saw candy. The pavement had transformed into a sticky, syrupy goo, trapping my feet like quicksand. I struggled to lift them, but the more I fought, the deeper I sank. The candy man loomed above me, his smile wide, his teeth sharp and jagged like broken candy glass. Jake grabbed my arm again, pulling with all his strength. Come on, snap out of it! But the world around us had changed. The street was gone, replaced by rows and rows of candy stands, all identical to the one where the candy man had stood. Dark figures moved between them, their faces hidden beneath wide-brimmed hats, their eyes glowing in the dark. They whispered, their voices mingling in the air like the rustling of candy wrappers. No one ever leaves once they've tasted his candy, Jake whispered, his face pale as a ghost. I didn't know how he knew that, but deep down I knew he was right. The candy man didn't just want my candy bag, he wanted me. Jake yanked harder, pulling me free from the sticky ground just as the candy man lunged forward, his hand swiping through the air where I had been. We stumbled back, the world spinning around us, the stands fading into the shadows. We ran. I didn't look back. I couldn't. By the time we made it back to Jake's house, I could barely breathe. We slammed the door shut, locking it behind us. My heart pounded in my chest and my throat was still dry, the taste of that cursed candy lingering. Did... Did you see him? I gasped. Jake nodded, his face white. I saw, but no one's gonna believe us. I didn't care if anyone believed us. All I cared about was getting as far away from that candy stand as possible. But just as I started to calm down, I noticed something. My candy bag was lighter. I reached inside, my hand brushing against something cold and metallic. I pulled it out, a small red candy wrapper. And then I heard it, a soft knock at the door. You've just heard the chilling legend of the Candyman's Halloween stand, but the story doesn't end here. Who knows? The Candyman may be lurking in the shadows, waiting for his next victim. If you enjoyed tonight's haunting tale, be sure to like, subscribe, and join our growing community of thrill seekers. Comment below if you've caught a glimpse of the Candyman, or perhaps you've seen him lurking around your neighborhood. And don't forget, he might just leave you a little surprise next Halloween. Stay tuned for more stories that will keep you up at night here on the Midnight Listener.